as Jesus is judged by Pilate. Our scripture reading comes from the 15th chapter of Mark and the 27th chapter of Matthew. As soon as it was morning, the chief priests with the elders and scribes and the whole council held a consultation. And they bound Jesus and led him away and delivered him to Pilate. And Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, You have said so. And the chief priest accused him of many things. And Pilate asked him again, Have you no answer to make? See how many charges they bring against you? But Jesus made no further answer. So when Pilate saw that he was gaining nothing, but rather that a riot was beginning, he took water and washed his hands before the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. See to it yourself. Let us pray. Gracious and loving Lord, grant us discernment that we may see you not as the world sees you, but recognize you as the one true Son of God. Amen. John 19, verses 1 through 3. Then Pilate took Jesus and had him scourged. And the soldiers wove a crown of thorns and placed it on his head, and clothed him with a purple cloak. And they came to him and said, Hail, King of the Jews. And they struck him repeatedly. Lord, grant us patience in times of suffering, that we may offer our lives as a sacrifice of praise. Dear Heavenly Father, Continue to guide us so that we might be obedient to your will. In the name of Jesus we pray. Amen. The thing that we're doing today is that Jesus bears the cross. The scripture is from John 19, 6 and 15 through 17. When the chief priests and the guards saw Jesus, they said, Crucify him. Pilate said to them, Take him yourselves and crucify him. If no guilt is in him, they cried him, take, they cried out, Take him away, take him away, crucify him. Pilate said to them, Shall I crucify your king? And the chief priests answered, We have no king but Caesar. Then he handed him over to them to be crucified. So they took Jesus and carrying the cross himself, he went out to what is called the place of the skull, in Hebrew, Golgotha. Let us pray. Lord, we wish for you to be our God. We wish to have you as God and not, not Caesar. Help us to focus on you. And Lord, we pray that we might accept you and follow you and take our crosses and faithfully bear them in your behalf. Amen. Jesus is crucified. Our scripture is from the 23rd chapter of Luke. When they came to the place called the skull, they crucified Jesus and the criminals there, one on his right and the other on his left. Then Jesus said, Father, forgive them. They know not what they do. Let us pray. Lord, as we stand at the foot of your cross, we behold your hands that touched and healed your feet that covered many miles to walk, to minister, and to teach, and your lips that spoke so many words in prayer and in teaching. Help us to stand here, Lord, and to learn, to learn and to take in what your life meant, what your life means, and what we will learn from your death. 
In your death, there is reconciliation, there is love, there is mercy and forgiveness. Help us always to look to you with thankful hearts and love. Help us to show your love into this world. Amen. Luke chapter 23 verses 44 through 46. It was now about noon and darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon because of an eclipse of the sun. Then the veil of the temple was torn down the middle. Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Father, into your hands I commend my spirit. And when he had said this, he breathed his last. Let us pray. Dear Lord, grant us trust in you that when our time on earth has ended, our spirits may come to you without delay. Dear Heavenly Father, let us not forget that Jesus died on the cross and for the reasons in which he died. Dear Heavenly Father, help us lead a life that is honorable to this act. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Last scripture is found in Matthew's Gospel and is dealing with the burial of Jesus. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself become a disciple of Jesus. And going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. And Joseph took the body and wrapped it in a clean linen cloth and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. And he rolled a big stone in front of the entrance of the tomb and went away. Let's pray together. Lord, today of all days, we stop and, and remember the cross. We thank you for dying in our place. We thank you for this incredible, incredible, deep expression of love. And help us to ponder it, to be thankful for what you have done and to allow that to penetrate our very spirits. And we celebrate you, and we love you for, for your love that first loved us. In Jesus' name, amen. Good Friday. How can one describe such a day? The wrongdoing of all humanity, putting to an end an innocent man, the Son of God. This is the story of Jesus' death by way of a cross, all in one moment bringing death to the bright light of our future. He never stopped loving us, and yet this is the incredible part of it. Our sin stopped his heart. Our sin drove the nails firmly in the hands of God. All along, these were the plans. We told ourselves that we were in control, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. The brutal beating, the inhuman flogging, the naked humiliation. Heaven watched and saw it all. Our rebellion, our guilt, our shame, erasing the very notion of reconciling us with God, our sin and our debt, overcoming Jesus. Here is our King, obliterated. The enemy laughing, his plans unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of freedom rising. Now God's people are utterly broken. Behold the chains of mortality. Yes, this is what is true. We had heard the stories of old. The lost are found, the blind can see, the weak are made strong. But now we are witnesses to this reality. God is dead. We'd almost believed there is a way of redemption. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a peace beyond understanding. Now we know better. For us, we can say that God is encapsulated in this one realization. 
the single greatest sacrifice in human history is finished. How clearly we can see it. So what's so good about Good Friday? Just one thing, that the blood of Jesus can reverse the curse of sin and raise the dead to life. How clearly we can see it is finished. The single greatest sacrifice in human history encapsulated in this one realization. We can say that God is for us. Now we know better. There is a peace beyond understanding. There is a life of fulfillment. There is a way of redemption. We had almost believed God is dead, but now we are witnesses to this reality. The weak are made strong. The blind can see. The lost are found. We had heard the stories of old. Yes, this is what is true. The chains of mortality utterly broken. Behold, freedom rising. Now God's people are unstoppable. There's no longer the sound of the enemy laughing. His plans obliterated. Here is our King, Jesus, overcoming our sin and our debt, reconciling us with God, erasing the very notion of our rebellion, our guilt, our shame. Heaven watched and saw it all, the naked humiliation, the inhuman flogging, the brutal beating, and this was deemed sufficient for all of us. We told ourselves that we were in control. All along, these were the plans firmly in the hands of God. Our sin drove the nails, our sin stopped his heart, and yet this is the incredible part of it. He never stopped loving us. The bright light of our future all in one moment bringing death to death by way of a cross. This is the story of Jesus, the Son of God, an innocent man putting to an end the wrongdoing of all humanity. How can one describe such a day? Good Friday.